to us, please welcome Carlos Sierpete, John O'Hurley. Nice to see. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> but John, I... we've spoken a few times, and I think you understand a little bit of Greek now. I don't understand a blessed <laughs> word. I, my mother used to say Johannes Gorgas. That was John George. That was my, uh, my, my, my first name and my second name. Because your roots are Irish. 100% uh, Irish. Uh -huh. But my mother took Greek in high school, and she thought, in a way to preserve it, she had to use the few words that she knew. And you do have a connection to Greece, because you filmed in Greece. Uh, I have filmed in Greece. I did a wonderful film over there on the Isle of Rhodes uh, uh, several years ago in a wonderful film called Swing Away, a wonderful romantic tale about, uh, about golf, about... Uh, uh, it, it was really a, a wonderful film about returning to your roots in Greece, and uh, it had so many wonderful themes to it. Uh, and it was a wonderful romantic story as well, but also a comedy, and I had a great time doing it. The people of Greece are the proudest culture I have ever met without, and I'm Irish, and I think we're proud. Yeah. But we have nothing to be proud about. You know, we have miserable cuisine, we have, you know, we have, you know, <laughs> you know we have Mrs. Murphy's chowder, you know what I mean, and we boil our meat. You know what I mean? That's about all we have there. But the Greeks have, are proud to be Greek when they wake up at 6 in the morning. They are proud to be Greek all the way through the day until they go to bed at 4 a.m. And they're still proud to be Greek, and uh, it starts all over again at 6 a.m. I love Vegas. I've had some fun experiences there myself. You were in a film. You don't have to tell us. It stays there. Yeah. But I want you to tell everyone about the film. Oh, great new film. Uh, I, you know, I'm lucky enough to... Uh, have the time and the means now to to do the things that I want to do yeah. and so I do films that I really like okay. when I read the script I go oh that's just fun I okay. gotta go do that so this was um, the Van, the famous Van Patten Dick Van Patten's sons uh, God bless Dick uh, he's passed on but he left his son his sons are uh, are derelict gamblers but okay. they're the sweetest guys in the world okay. and they're great poker players and but they have done a film, and it's based on a true story, and it's called Seven Days to Vegas, and the whole premise of the film is about how far will somebody go on a bet. Okay. And it's a million dollar gamble on a seven day walk to Vegas through 130 degree heat through the Mojave Desert wearing a suit. Okay. I won't say anything more about the film, but it is hysterically funny. Yeah, I was. I'm in the film, okay. uh, obviously, and it is. I, I just love when I saw this film, and I don't watch what I do. Oh, okay. Because I'm not entertainment to myself. But I did go for the screening of this, okay. and it is just one of the most enjoyable films I, in memory. Seven Days to Vegas, and where did you film? Did you film on the Strip? Uh, well, the, it, it was filmed in, in California, okay. uh, in Vegas, and in the all in between. Oh, okay. All in between, every gully in between. You'll, you'll hear a commercial where Jay Peterman is back again. Yeah. And what I like is that I've been able to keep the lunacy of that character alive through advertising. Okay. through um, uh, the things that I do on okay. the side uh, so he still has a you know he still you know he still peeks up every now and then because it represented um, a style of writing on Seinfeld yeah. that they didn't have with any other character and it was a long form they would write long monologues and things like that they were just outrageous <laughs> and hysterical <laughs> and I loved them and it was such a fun you know fun to be able to be part of um, kind of a give and take with a writing staff that was maybe the most talented uh, yeah. in, in our memory. Uh, and they've all gone on to do, you know, Curb Your Enthusiasm and The Veep and, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, other, you know, other shows. All of the Seinfeld writers are gainfully employed uh, on those shows. So, so the humor of Seinfeld now lives in other media. But uh, that was the place. That's, that was the cathedral where it all started. And you mentioned 30 years. And like here in Toronto, I literally watch it every day. Like it's like you mentioned earlier, too. 85 countries, number one syndicated show. 85 countries, wow. number one. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. How, I was in Botswana once uh, doing a National Geographic special, hosting that. Yeah. And um, I land on a dirt strip in the middle of Botswana. 400 miles from any human being yeah. and there is my guide to meet me along with the National Geographic staff and he looks at me and goes, oh, Mr. Peterman. <laughs> yes, 
<laughs> in the middle of Botswana. I've been here for so many years. Back yeah. in the early 90s, my first time here, I was at Stage West in Mississauga with Loretta Swit from MASH doing uh, Same Time Next Year, a two-person show we did together. My first time back then, and I loved it back then, and I used to go up to, you know, on our nights off, I'd drive up to Muskoka, go fishing up there, and I just love, I mean, I just love the, the, the kind of the garden city feeling, garden okay. slash city, um, and the way that Canada takes care of its parks, uh, the way that they respect their, you know, their greenery. Uh, and, and, and the way that the city has grown. I, 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 Toronto is just one of my favorite cities in the world. We love to hear that. We love to hear yeah, that it's here. Just, it's wonderful and the people are lovely here. You know, Canadians are at their base family trained. Okay. Their dad and their mom, very strong influences. You talk to the, you know, the NHL players, they're all very polite and very, you know, very you know, they'll, they'll pound it out on the ice, but they'll, you know, they'll put their arms around each other and go for a pint of beer afterwards. And, you know, there's, there's a civility to the Canadian people that I just really, really love. And it comes from having strong families. I'm the national spokesman of the U.S. for uh, epilepsy. Okay. Uh, and specifically for a thing called SUDEP, S-U-D-E-P, which okay. is the acronym for Sudden Unexplained Death in Epilepsy. Okay. Um, it's something that's never really been addressed before. Okay. And uh, a certain number of people that have epilepsy are predisposed to having seizures during the night and dying. And no one knows why this happens. You know, it has nothing to do with, they just literally pass away during the night. Uh, and many of them are young children. And I lost my sister to suit up yeah. in epilepsy. Uh, and so it, that part of the epileptic um, scope right now has always been something very personal to me. Uh, epilepsy is something that should be manageable. Okay. Many people have it. Okay. Uh, about a tenth of our population are epileptic. Wow. So it should be something that is manageable. But for some reason, the sudden death, so what I'm trying to do right now is raise money across the country in the U.S. and Canada okay. uh, on, uh, on trying to find the, what they call the biomarker which will establish the database okay. for why this happens. Okay. Once they establish that biomarker, that database, then they can attack it okay. from many different means, whether it is surgically, whether it's with drugs, uh, whether it's dietetic, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, there's so many ways to approach seizure control uh, and, and, and to finally give, uh, put an end to this because it, uh, let me put it this way, if you're a parent whose child has been diagnosed with epilepsy, that will be the last night you ever sleep comfortably because you're always worried that that child will have a seizure during the night. So your mission is to create awareness? Awareness and, and, and also to raise funds. I, okay. I'm on a $3 million fundraising uh, and I'm, I, 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 I bit off a lot of it in the first uh, part when I was in New York a couple of months ago. Um, we, we solved a lot of that problem real quick. But uh, I'm on a fundraising mission uh, across uh, the U.S. to to get the last pieces of funds that are necessary to get cost. this biomarker uh, across the goal line. And then you told me about an event, a culinary event, and that's going to happen in Canada. Yeah, in the, Fall, southern, right? yeah, yeah the southern Ontario chapter of epilepsy. Okay. We're doing a really fun event. Um, it's a um, gourmet challenge. Okay. And it's almost like uh, you'd watch Iron Chef, but you'd have three or four or five celebrity chefs the people have raised money to be the sous chefs, the secondary chefs, uh, which is <laughs> I, it's so much fun. And of course, you'll have the secret ingredient. You'll have a panel of judges, and it, and then I host the event. We do, we shoot oh. it as a television show. Oh, fabulous! And it is so much fun and so competitive. So competitive. Okay. When we do these style of shows, it is so much fun okay. because everybody learns, and they're on the, on their on their best culinary behavior in front of the celebrity chef that they're working. With. And the celebrity chefs, you know, they don't care. It's like, let's get this done. Right. We're on a, we're on yeah. a time clock. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you pair, when I say pair, you pair. You know? So it's a lot them. of fun. Oh, it's just great. And the audience is there screaming through the entire night. Oh, you night. guys have a live audience there. Well, oh, so. live audience. We shoot it as a television show. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I think I'm going to have to pop by. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah, absolutely. In the fall? You let me know I'm going to pop Your by. Your cameras will be on it and welcome <laughs> as well. Since now you've taken me into culinary arts, you know, I've got a travel food show here, and I want you to tell me the truth if you cook. 
If I cook. Oh, well, I love cooking. Okay. I'm a wine guy and a cooking guy. Okay, yeah. so what would be your favorite anything, thing to cook? Anything that involves sensuality. <laughs> okay, we just turned this into a pay-per-view <laughs> event, didn't we? So, but I do love to cook. You do love to cook. So in the first category, which is actually making it, what would be like one of your favorite dishes to make? Uh, I have a signature recipe, which I took a sauce, and it's a vanilla sauce which is an odd sauce because in cooking, you think of vanilla as a dessert. Sure, like sauce. in baking, yeah. But yeah. you can semi-sweet a dessert, uh, or a, uh, a vanilla sauce, okay. so that it actually is usable and palatable in, um, uh, as a cooking oh, okay. application. And, uh, and I do something very specific. So listen carefully, because this will get you girls. It is a vanilla sauce over butter poached lobster on a bed of lightly sautéed spinach okay. to die for. Maybe in my life okay. the best thing I've ever tasted and I'll tell you why. Okay. The semi-sweetness of the vanilla sauce yeah. and the tartness of the, of the uh, spinach okay. together and then with the butter poach, the softness of the gentility of the butter poach lobster on top okay. of that. This is the first time I've talked about it in Canada. Over the, it's first time over the border. That's pretty amazing, John, because you know later on in the show, I head over to a kitchen where a chef teaches me how to make that. So this is the uh, first time. Really? Yes. Really? This is the first time it will be made in Canada. Pilfered in Canada. <laughs> What's the inspiration? I mean, are, are you a big seafood guy? Well, I am. I was born in okay. Maine. I was born in Kittery, Maine, which is a uh, maybe one of the great lobster ports in the history of the U.S. Okay. Goes back 200 years, and and the symbol of man's struggle against the sea and coming home with your with your lobsters and everything, then you surviving and okay. stuff like that. Now today, Kittery is the largest shopping outlet center in the United States, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's such a surrender to the primitive. But the um, but it is, uh, that's where I grew up, or that's where I was born, and I always have to have a minimum daily requirement of shellfish every day. But can you give me a favorite meal that maybe perhaps is prepared at home or something you eat out in a restaurant? I am a pasta whore. I love pasta. You love pasta? Okay. I love pasta. I love um, al dente fresh made pasta. Oh. Um, so, and I like it very simple. Spaghetti with a great meatball and a great sauce okay. and I like to, to experience great tomato sauces just this very simple because okay. everywhere you know it's like you worship a thousand gods and more will appear try a thousand tomato sauces and more you know they're all different Don you're so enthusiastic about food and I've loved talking to you about food and I've learned so much as well I'm thinking you should join me in the kitchen on an episode I'm there yeah okay. you don't have to ask twice just to warn you, I burn a few things, so I'm yeah, actually going to I have a little recipe called curry with the singe on top. <laughs> Stay tuned because John and Christina may be doing an episode together shortly. Well, for now, I am going to head to the kitchen and try and make that beautiful vanilla lobster sauce. Is that and correct? remember, it gets you girls. Well, let's see what it does for me. Dos, how are you? I'm good. I'm it's good. so good to see you. And yeah, uh, I'm glad to have you back here again. Well, thank you very much. It's Merci been a little beaucoup. while. I'm glad you came back. Thank you for not kicking me out. No, of course not. I You're knew, always welcome. I knew you were going to welcome me back for this one because I've got you a bit of an idol today. Yeah, uh, this so. is a nice one. Mr. John O'Hurley. Yeah. A.K.A. Mr. Peter Mern. Mr. Peter Mern from Seinfeld. From Seinfeld. And if those who don't know from Seinfeld, who was he on? Elaine's boss. Elaine's boss. Who doesn't remember Elaine's that long boss. tone of the way he would talk? Oh, Elaine. Was amazing. <laughs> Elaine. <laughs> awesome guy. I spoke with him at the Hotel X here in Toronto. Yeah. And he said, Christina, I'm going to give you a recipe that gets you girls. And I thought, okay, John, I got to give this to a bachelor. So... <laughs> You're a chef. You're a bachelor. I am. So I think you're the perfect chef to remake this recipe. Um, this was interesting because he had like things like um, honey. He had um, uh, vanilla in it, and I was just like, I don't know how that's gonna work as a sauce to complement the fish. Now I did do his recipe and I tried it, and I was like, I wasn't not to say it wasn't bad, but yeah. I was just like, okay, you know what? You're Greek. 
okay? You're the Greek goddess. Of, you're my kukla forever, okay? <laughs> and uh, I was like, you know what? I got to do it. With like an orzo, the way that you guys... Aww, right? this is why you're the best. You're paying homage <laughs> to Greece and to Ireland because John O'Hurley said yeah, this is yeah, Irish. Yeah, yeah, So I'm like, I, I'm doing my combination to, to please both. So okay. um, the thing is, though, the way he left it was you can do it with lobster, yeah. with, with salmon. Mm -hmm. You can do it with any type of fish that you want to do. But I was just like, you know what? Let's do it with the salmon that we have okay. here today. And then, um, you know what? We don't need to do it with a pasta or anything like that. Let's keep it with the orzo, the way the Greeks love their orzo yeah. with their different tomatoes, their olives, and all that. Okay? Now, with the way that we're going to do it today, this is going to be a little bit different. So, um, we already have a finished product over here. But what was interesting was um, he used a honey extract. But for me, it was really to use more of a real raw um, uh, sorry, not the, the honey bark, but the um, vanilla. Okay. So I already did do the uh, vanilla extract out from original, right. from the stem and everything yeah. like that. But you got to be very, very careful to use very limited. Yeah. Okay. Or so for the viewers overtake. at home who don't know, the vanilla comes <coughs> from this beautiful, luscious yeah. bean. And it is the most beautiful thing you're ever going to smell. But it's very, very strong. So you can only use very little. This is not anything like what we use at home like i know you have here some vanilla actually right. just because it might be easier for the viewers to use and right. all you want to use is even actually just um uh, half of a tail uh, half of a cap uh from a vanilla extract yeah. bottle or like even less than half than a, a teaspoon okay because it's it's gonna be overwhelming and remember okay. this is a savory dish okay okay this is not a sweet dish so uh, on top of that we also have other things that were already pre-made so we have some lemon juice that we need uh, that he had in his menu on his recipe and then we also have uh, some tzatziki that we're going to use uh, we also have some lime juice here that's been combined with um, a garlic aioli and then over here we have like a chipotle where we grinded the peppers and we add it with some mayo and, and pretty much that's about it I can't believe you did so much work for me. Oh, of course. We all <laughs> You're on my good list right now, <laughs> Chef Russell. Okay. You ground Chipotle just for the show. Just for the show. Okay, I mean, beautiful. to make it work. Just to give it a little kick, just to kick it out. Okay. But I mean, you have to understand, in both of these two, um, there is some chopped up onions as okay, well, good. as well as some uh, grated um, ginger and okay. garlic on, on those So two. good. And you've made it quite healthy because the ginger is so good for our immune system. I try Absolutely. to have a little bit every day. So good. So you've made it healthy. You've made it savory, delicious. And it's the way that um, you would want to make it for any day. So, gentlemen, if you're paying attention and watching the show, this is how you get the night started. Okay, so let's get our pan warm, okay? okay. And we're going to use some of that beautiful olive oil that you always okay. bring to us. Governor? Governor. Extra okay. virgin, pre-harvest. Am I putting it right in the pan? Uh, right, absolutely, okay. right in the pan. Right in the pan here. All right, so we're going to let that warm up, Okay. And then once we have that warmed up, we're going to take our salmon from here, okay? Now, you did teach me to do this. Ah, you remember, you remember. I remember a little bit. I'm getting yeah. better. Okay. And again, a little goes a long way here, right? Yeah, again, you know, people use those terms, you know, you know you don't, it, it shouldn't be swimming. It's all about yeah. just getting it a little bit flavorful what we need to do. This is such good quality, Chef Russell, that as it heats up, I smell olive. Like I can smell fresh olive because this is uh, pre-harvest, so it comes from the green olive that's only found on the island of Corfu. And um, if you want to, I mean, we already have our pre-op, but if you want to show them how it gets done okay. for your viewers, you can start taking all these other sauces and you can start putting them into the bowl. Okay. So what you want to start is with um, your heavy cream tzatziki right there. Okay. I love how you made this spoon? Greek. You made it into the whole thing. Got it. Yeah. Absolutely. You yeah. Made it into cream measure. It's all about you know. Quarter of a uh, quarter this? cup. So that's the um, lime chipotle right there. Get it inside. Yeah. Okay. And then you have this one too. This is the kicker. Yes. So this was the chili pepper one? Yes. It? Okay, very good. And then you have some of your lemon juice. Okay, lemon so juice. So you can add some of that. And then you have, you don't want to go too strong with your fish sauce. You just want to do a couple of drops like that. So John had mentioned clam juice. Now you were telling me something yeah. earlier about the fish it sauce. Well, well, I mean, well, he, he, he uh, again, his menu added the clam. It didn't work for me. I couldn't really taste the fishiness of that. So, um, oh, I can I used, smell that. You see that? A little that? goes a long way. A do not over. drop that bottle in there. No, do not, do not. Beautiful do not. consistency, chef. And then 
for your viewers to make it easy. Right there. I, I have chef hands. I'm used to this. So okay. all I'm going to do is just give it a nice flip. Okay. Like that. Okay. Give it a nice flip. Chef hands means for everybody at home, you have no feeling in any of your fingers, right? That's it. Am I right? Okay. That's it. All right. So we're done over here. Now we're going to plate. Okay, you found us the perfect plate, Chef Russell. Mm -hmm. And now we've got the orizo. We're putting it in the middle of the dish. All right, so we're going to take our orizo. We're going to place it right here in the center. Now, for viewers at home who are getting a close-up on this, you tell us a little bit about how you prepared this. Because we didn't prepare this on cam, Chef Russell. That's you right. did this the night before. So yeah. how so, was this prepared? So the orizo, is, it, it's actually, um, if you notice right here, if you watch it, it's a long, thick grain. To cook this perfectly, the way you have to understand is, it's not one of those things you just put in your rice cooker and just let it go. You gotta understand that it's a long thick grain that's always gonna be very starch. It's very, you gotta wash your rice properly, okay? So you wash your rice, get all your starch out, and then you have to let it soak. If you don't let it soak, what I mean by that, in water, so orzo, if you have one cup of orzo, you need to uh, soak it in about two and a half cups of water. Okay. Okay, because it's too thick, okay? So we soak it first. You soak it first, meaning, the soaking process is gonna help break down the grain of the rice, okay? If not, you're left with kanji rice, meaning it's just really sticky, okay? So what you wanna do is let it soak for at least an hour and a half for this long grain. And then when you cook it, you do wanna do it, make sure you do it um, al dente, okay? okay? Always cook your rice half par like okay. this, because at that time, when you're draining your rice in your sink, all right, you need to remember something it's still cooking. So once it's draining and you put it back in your pot after you re removed all the excess water, that steaming process that's happening. So all what's happening, all that steam comes up, you cover that steam. Okay. And you cover it for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, take it out, your order is perfect. That's a long process for the rice salad. That's, it looks that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's how it works, that's okay. how it goes down. Yeah. We got, I think I gotta do an extra episode just on that one. That sounds, <laughs> it looks so easy and I'm like, oh, tell no, us how you make the rice salad. No, no, no. It's no, a process no, no. to that. Yeah, and then after that, you're here, you top it up, get okay. your sauce. Doesn't that look beautiful, Chef Russell? And then you add right here. So this is the sauce that we want. So remember something. We cooked our salmon separately, okay. and we did our sauce separately, and then we top it off. All right, and that's okay. pretty much it. This is beautiful. Thank you so much, Chef Russell, You're once again welcome. for a beautiful recipe and for going all out because you did a lot of prep work for this. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. it's all good. Hey everybody, I'm I'll take it from here. I'm John O'Hurley and you're watching Star Foods.